In this video, we are going to learn how to find imaginary solutions. So we're going to find all solutions to each quadratic equation. So what I alluded to at the beginning of this section is that when we, start, when we solve quadratic equations, we may end up finding imaginary solutions now. So let's look at 2x squared plus minus 3x plus 5. Now I can already tell right away that I will not be able to factor this because there are no two numbers that multiply to 10 and then add to negative 3. So I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula, which just to go over again, uh, the quadratic formula is x is equal to the fraction negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So as I plug those in, I see that my a value is 2, b is negative 3, and c is 5. So I get x is equal to negative of negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 5, all over 2 times a, so 2 times 2. I'll get x equal to positive 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times 2 times 5, so that's 8 times 5, so 40, all over 4. And then I can see here that I'll get x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 31 which is going to lead to an imaginary number. Now we learned before that the number underneath the radical is called the discriminant. And whenever it was negative, we had no real solutions. And the reason why is because now this is going to be a complex solution with two imaginary numbers. So I can rewrite this as x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which is i square root of 31. 31 is a prime number, so we can't simplify that any further. So now the two solutions I get, right in the real and the imaginary part, would be 3 fourths plus the square root of 31 over 4, i, and x is equal to 3 fourths minus the square root of 31 over 4, i. So we get two imaginary solutions, meaning we wouldn't see these solutions on a graph. Because normally, whenever a quadratic is equal to zero, that means that at those particular x values, it's crossing the x-axis. But here, we wouldn't see where that happens. It actually happens in the complex plane. So let's look at this next example. 2x times x minus 3 is equal to negative 5. Be very careful. When you see two factors being multiplied, unless they're equal to 0, we can't just set them equal to the number on the other side. So we need to actually distribute the 2x. So we get 2x squared minus 6x equals negative 5, and then add 5 to both sides. So we have it equal to 0. Now, if you suspect that it might not have any real solutions, you can look at the discriminant first and then finish the rest of the problem from there, meaning I can take negative 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5, and that gives me 36 minus 4 times 10, so 40, which gives me negative 4. So the fact that this discriminant, which I'm going to rewrite that word again so you know what I'm saying, discriminant's negative. So what I need to what I know is that there won't be any real solution, so I will be getting an i as a solution. So if I were to plug into my quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b. b in this case is negative 6, a is 2, and c is 5. Negative of negative 6 is positive 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which I already found for my discriminant, all over 2 times a which would be 2 times 2, which is 4. Now simplifying, I get x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4, so I know it's an imaginary number, and 4 is also a perfect square, so I get 2 all over 4. 
So my two solutions are 6 over 4, which is 3 halves, plus 2 over 4i, so 1 half i, and x is equal to 3 halves, 6 over 4, minus 1 half i. Now this next example is actually in a pretty good position for us to uh, solve this using completing the square. And what I mean by that is if I move the 4x over to the left and the 5 over to the right, I get x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 5. And if I complete the square on the left, then I can use a different technique. It's usually a bit faster and more Usually there's less room for mistakes than trying to use the quadratic formula every time. So that number I add right here is half of b squared, so negative 4 over 2 squared, which would be negative 2 squared, which is 4. So if you add 4 to each side, we'll now have a perfect squared trinomial on the left, which can be factored into x minus 2 squared. Again, that's just like square root of x squared, which is x, square root of 4, which is 2, and you keep the sign from the middle. That's how you factor a, 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 a perfect square trinomial. Then negative 5 plus 4, which is negative 1. And then we can take the square root of both sides, giving me the absolute value of negative 2. It's equal to the square root of negative 1, which is i. Now get rid of the absolute value. We can get plus or minus i, add 2, x is equal to 2 plus or minus i. So my two solutions are 2 plus i and x is equal to 2 minus i. Now sometimes your equation might have imaginary numbers too and sometimes that can make it more complicated to solve but in this case I actually see my two factors are complex conjugates meaning if I were to multiply these out the i would disappear. So let's actually distribute the x plus 3i and simplify this before I start solving. Oop, minus, make that a big minus sign so you don't think it's plus, times x plus 3i. Again, just distributing that to each term equals 34. And I'll get x squared plus 3ix minus 3ix minus 9i squared which again, I see these middle terms will cancel because they are conjugates. I know that's going to happen. Then i squared is equal to negative 1. So instead of negative 9 i squared, negative 9 times negative 1 is a positive 9. Leave me with x squared plus 9 equals 34. And now I have one, a one variable equation. I can just solve this for x subtract 9, I get x squared is equal to 25. Take the square root of both sides, I get absolute value of x is equal to 5. x is equal to positive or negative 5, so my two solutions would be positive 5 and negative 5. And that is how you find, and that is how you find imaginary solutions.